Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. So I'm currently teaching a class about lighting and shading. And one of the assignments I've given them is to create an interior environment. So I thought I might also do the assignment just to kind of have some practice under my own belt and just have something I can show in class as well to give an example. And I thought I'd record the progress here and uh, use it as content for the channel. Hopefully you guys can get something out of it. This will mostly be modeling at first as I uh, attempt to model the environment and eventually we'll get on to textures, materials, and lighting. So let me just show you the uh, reference image I'm going off of. So it's like this ballroom uh, type of grand in room, very decorative. Uh, at, when I showed my students what I was thinking of doing, they obviously thought, whoa, this is huge. And, and you know, it obviously is a very impressive uh, room. But if you really look at it and break it down into its core elements, it's not too bad, really, if you think about it. Okay, so let's look at it. What, are, what all are we going to actually need to make? Well, the first of all, the thing that really comes to uh, mind when you look at the picture is all the chandeliers, right? So you have two main chandeliers. You have the main one you know, the main large one here in the center of the room. It's very decorative, very nice. And then you have these kind of crystal looking ones on the sides. One thing to keep in mind though is once you make one, you can duplicate it for the rest, right? You're not having to make each one. Once you have one of them, you can duplicate it for all the rest of them. So that's kind of what we're going to plan to do. So we need to make one, two chandeliers. So the big one and the little one. So what else we need? We need also obviously the structure itself, the room. So what's the room made of? You see all these columns, these kind of column structures here. So again, once we make one of these, we can duplicate it for all the rest of them. So we need one of these, okay? So the column with the support down here and the piece up here that's on top of the column and the kind of arc, arching uh, structure that meets to the roof. So once we have all of that kind of pieced together, we can duplicate and kind of merge them all together to make uh, one. Then we, of course, have the big wooden doors here with the uh, piece on top. Once we have one of those, we have the rest. Okay, what else we have? In the back here, we have the white doors. They're very similar, but, you know, they're white doors. Again, this kind of piece here, we can copy that over for this side. In the middle here, I believe this is a mi very large mirror, which is uh, mirroring the other side of the room, which, from the looks of the reflection, is the same as this side. So, again, once we have this side of the room done, we can duplicate it over for the other side. Then we have a relatively flat for floor with a rug that we can uh, worry about that later with the textures and such. And then all these arches as they come up to the ceiling open up to this uh, recessed area here. Kind of a big oblong uh, half cylinder shape. And then of course you have these things where the uh, chandeliers are meeting these structures on the ceiling. So yeah, it's a lot of work, don't get me wrong. But when you really piece it together, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and then we can go ahead and call this part six, and maybe this part seven, and then, you know, the floor. So eight, like, main structures involved here. So let's think of it that way. We're going to break it down into our eight pieces. So when, when, how, how to get started. What I typically will do is either block in the scene, or if I don't feel like doing that, I will just kind of start making part of the uh, structures. So let's start with maybe, I'm thinking the column or the door. Well, let's start with the door. It's pretty simple, uh, give or take, relatively speaking. So let's start with this door. So we're going to make this door shape. I'm going to have this picture off to the side, so you won't necessarily see it uh, while I'm working, but you can kind of see it here. It's a relatively simple shape, squarish, has these windows here with the window frames, have this uh, arch shape above it, and we have some edging materials and then like this big arch up here. So I think uh, for this first video we'll get started at least, may not finish it, but we'll get started at least on this uh, door. So give me a second, let me set up my scene here. Okay. So I have my uh, UI kind of set up. I have my my interface here that you can see. And off to the side of the recording, I have Photoshop open with the uh, image. You can kind of see it here as I drag it like that. Okay, so I'm just going to get started. I'm going to work on the door. And I'm just kind of looking at the picture 
and then going off of that. So first thing to think about is scale. This is a very large door if you were to go back and look at the picture or might stick it in here and post just so you can see it again. A very large door. The actually looking at it here and I ha again I have Photoshop open on the side here that's what you're seeing. Uh, the bottom of it is actually where people enter and then above that is mainly windows like a window treatment. So the bottom of the door is literally where the door actually opens and closes and above that is like a large window treatment and then an arch right there. I mean, you can see in the picture that the, do the door is actually kind of a double door. So what we could do that you save even more time is make half of it and then kind of mirror it over for the other uh, side. I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, well, that's the plan. We'll just kind of get started here. So I'm just going to make a cube, put my pivot down to the bottom of the cube, and raise my cube up here on the grid so that it's sitting on the grid like this. And I'm just kind of eyeing scale and such. I did work on a project once where the scale was incredibly important, where everything had to be uh, exact when it comes to the scale of things. We had blueprints we were working off of and everything like that. I'm not going to worry about that too much here. Just to, for one thing, save some time so we're not worrying about it too much. And then another thing just because it's easier not to think about right now. I'm mainly just going to try and look at the uh, overall aesthetics of the piece. I use a lot of bevels and such when I'm working on pieces like this. And as we go forward with this project, if you guys, you know, you guys can comment to me on how useful this is or not about having it be real time as opposed to, for example, uh, some kind of time lapse maybe. So you're not necessarily hearing me ramble so much and actually uh, be more of kind of watch and see how it goes as opposed to just uh, hearing me ramble on like this. And again, I am don't really have much in the way of plan. I'm just kind of looking at it and going from, going from there, you know, not really thinking too much about it. So I'm going to delete the back of this piece just because I'm going to be doing a lot of extrudes and bevels in here to get the uh, panel look. So I'm pressing G to redo the last tool I did, which in this case is extrude. So the point of this project for my students is not necessarily to get it exactly right with all the details, more that you're using your reference as a guide because the goal of the project is to recreate a uh, photo of a scene and like recreate it in digital form but at the same time we're going to be embellishing it making it look uh, more cinematic in some cases so perfection is not necessarily the key it's just making it match your reference as close as, as you can uh, in, a re in a reasonable way so I'm double clicking these edges to select the edge loops and beveling them. Bevels are important uh, f to kind of catch the light of your scene. Well, let me hide the grid so that grid's not going through the camera like that. Catches light, makes things look more dimensional. I'm adjusting the uh, fraction setting here to adjust the size of the bevel itself. So 
put this point on the door image. This is kind of goes up, have some space here. Right here is where the door handle is going to be. I'm going to extrude again. For this one, I'm going to go up a bit. This would be like the main window of the door area, section of the door. Kind of eye in the uh, scale of this. And delete the back uh, face again. Extrude this face, and here I'm going to create the opening for the window sections. Pressing G to use my extrude again. And I'm going to actually delete that face. So this will be my opening for my windows. So like this edge loop, I'm just going to kind of snap align it to the back of the door as it is now, just so it's all clean and together. Let's see, let's go to, I want to go to insert edge loop under the mesh tools menu. It's going to insert a loop right through here. Okay, I'm going to save this just because you never know when things crash. And I'm actually saving this as a uh, project for the door itself, not for the entire room. So this would be like a uh, big wood door or something like that. Wood door. So let me save that. So one handy trick. So I want to select the edge ring, not the loop. Edge loop. If I double click on the edge, I get the edge loop, which in this case is this uh, ring or loop of edges right through here. So the way you can do that is you select one of the corners in this case, hold shift and double click this one that's across from it and then it will also select the other edges in the loop, which is very handy. So you select one edge and then double click, shift, shift double click an edge in the loop you're wanting to select in and it will select the rest of them. So with this edge loop selected, or edge ring I should say, I'm going to go to my scale handle. I'm going to click on the Z axis scale handle here. Hold control, middle click, and drag. And this will scale it with the Z axis constrained so it won't get any smaller in the Z axis. And I'm just adding a little bit of a lip like this. Something like that. Just to give it a little bit of a bevel. Okay, let me look back at my reference here. So here's the beginning of our door structure. I might uh, make this not quite so tall. But again, don't want to get too picky right now. And then for the actual slats of the uh, window frame, I can create a couple of straight line pieces through here, or I can even go through and make another frame piece to kind of inset into this part of the door. So I think what I'm going to do, yeah, I think that'll look good. So I'm going to grab these faces and like this. So I have the faces surrounding the windows selected. I'll go to Edit Mesh, Duplicate. So I've duplicated those faces. Okay, so I have these faces selected. So I'm going to duplicate these faces. I'm just going to edit mesh and inherit down here is duplicate. I'm going to duplicate these faces. So once I've done that, I've duplicated those faces into a second object. You'll notice that a group gets created. I'm going to go to object mode. So just by selecting one of these pieces and pressing up, I select the group. I don't want this group. This group will kind of clutter my scene, especially if you're not used to these groups being in the scene. It can cause problems in the future. So I've gotten into the habit of when I create these extraneous groups to go to edit, ungroup, and just get rid of them. So now I have my duplicate, duplicate faces here. 
going to go to Modify Center Pivot, and I'm just going to scale it down so that kind of fits recessed into the window frame here. I want it to be a bit thinner. Scale it up some. So I want it to be like just right inside, right there, recessed. Just grab some points and kind of move them around a little bit. Right in there. And now I'll just make a cube to be my little frame pieces. So one thing about this project is it's not a real-time project. It's not uh, going to be used in a game or anything like that. So efficiency is not quite as big a deal as it would be if it were. So we can make this as high poly as we want, or as low poly as we want, as long as it fits within the theme of whatever project we're working on. And I've already given my students the uh, mandate that it can be a real-time game kind of project as long as it's not super low poly. I'm looking for uncharted level of detail if they're going to go game route. So again, looking at the picture of the door here, you can kind of see what we have here. We have the main structures of the lower part portion of the door kind of made already. We're going to kind of duplicate this over for the other side, I think. But before I do that, let me go ahead and grab these edges. And we're going to go ahead and bevel this edge. And every so often I can delete history if I feel like I'm happy with how things are going. Now these window slats are not necessarily positioned the best, but we can play with that later. So once I have all this, I can select all the pieces here, Control-E to duplicate, Control-G to group it, and then I can scale it negative one in the X and mirror it over like this. So here we have kind of the lower portion of our ballroom wooden doors. And we're going to uh, continue with this project as we have time. I'm expecting my students to get much further along than I do because they should have more time to do so. But anyway, uh, this is just kind of getting started here with our project. Uh, if you hope you like this kind of video, we're going to be doing more as we go forward with the project and hopefully get the scene all done within the next several weeks. So thanks for watching so far. Uh, let me know your comments and thoughts of uh, whether you like this type of content, and I will talk to you later.